I think, I think where Mr. Bossino is confused is that the issue is very simple. The UK never made a decision to put us on their list of high-risk countries or not. A decision was never taken. So when I say the Treasury support us, Mr. Bossino is saying, well, if they support you, why did they put you on the list? The truth is that the list is automatic. As soon as the FATF puts you on the list, automatically the UK puts you on the list. And when the FATF takes you off the list, the UK takes you off the list. But of course, Mr. Bassini didn't know that. So he's suggesting that I made a statement in Parliament and I didn't tell him about this. Well, it's not for me to tell them what the law is or isn't. I expect him to know. Uh, and before, certainly, he issues a public statement, I'd expect him to understand what it is that he's talking about. He clearly didn't. The Treasury had supported us how? Quite simply. In the intervening period, Treasury engaged with the regulators in the United Kingdom and all the banks that work with Gibraltar to ensure that they were proportionate and sensible in applying the extra due diligence that being on a high-risk country requires. So we worked with them to engage with the banks that we told them worked with Gibraltar and even one from the US to ensure that they explained to them the UK Treasury position in respect to Gibraltar having done so well on, on uh, the FATF, but unfortunately having ended up with these two points on the action plan. In other words, be proportionate. And that's what Treasury has done. They've been extraordinarily helpful to us and supportive, and we continue to work very closely with them for the benefit of our jurisdiction. That's all it is. Is the jurisdiction feeling the, the effects of the grey list? I, I think practitioners are because they have to do enhanced due diligence, which is what being on a high-risk country does. Um, so, so that has an impact. But don't forget, for example, many of our gaming companies um, have got offices in Malta. Malta's just come off the list as we went on it. So they've got 12 months of experience of working with grey listing. Um, they've now been removed. The Cayman Islands is on uh, the grey list. They similarly uh, have to deal with these enhanced due diligence. So companies and jurisdictions learn to work with it. But of course, our priority is to come off it as quickly as we possibly can. And that is where our efforts are, are entirely focused. Reputationally, of course, it's, it's a big blow for, to the jurisdiction. When is the grey list, when is the list next reviewed? Um, we've been given 12 months with which to comply with the two points that we have, which we hope to meet and comply with. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the system and the process is changing. I think you're going to see more and more jurisdictions going onto the grey list going through their period of, of further engagement with FATF and Moneyval and then coming off the greatest, like Malta did, like we have. I think more and more countries uh, are going to go through that process. It's a process, and I have to say, you come out of it a lot better than you went in. Our systems and processes in Gibraltar on anti-money laundering are far, far better now than they ever have been as a result of this process. So the process works. We do get better. Uh, and, and I'm confident that by the end of this year, we will be better. And when we're reviewed uh, in, in June next year, uh, I hope to be able to, to confirm to the people that we will be coming off the grey list.